computer. All right. Well, thank you all for joining us tonight. My name is Pastor Katie Metzen Daly. I use she, her pronouns, and I serve as the pastor and church planter at the Beloved, which is a church on St. Paul's East Side. And I know almost everyone I know was um, really impacted by the events today in Washington, D.C. Um, and I had a hard time walking away from the TV um, when I saw the events unfolding over my lunch break and I felt just kind of frozen um, and um, after feeling kind of frozen for a couple hours my impulse was how do I gather people to pray together so I reached out to some of my colleagues here in the St. Paul area and just said hey anyone interested in praying with us tonight um, talking about what we've got going on so so tonight what we're going to do is um, I want my colleagues uh, to each introduce themselves and share where they're serving. And then um, we'll um, do a little centering prayer. Um, we'll look at some scripture and, and talk about trauma. And then um, just as your pastor is from across the St. Paul area, we wanna, we're still unpacking these things and thinking about things and how does God fit into these things and what's our role in these things. So we're gonna have a conversation and, and we're inviting you to eavesdrop on that conversation with us. So um, welcome, we are glad you're here and um, we're, we're glad that we can have some time to, to pray and process and, and share together tonight. So um, I am going to call on Reverend Amanda Luneman to introduce herself because she's in my top left corner, so. I like being in the top left. <laughs> Hi, yes, as Katie said, I am uh, Reverend Amanda Luneman, and I am currently serving Silver Lake United Methodist Church that resides in Oakdale and right on the Oakdale North St. Paul border, basically. Um, and I, too, uh, was somebody, just another person and a citizen, um, but also a pastor and a mother and, you know, all the other um, adjectives that describe who I am and what I do for a living um, was affected by um, the events that have occurred. And so it's lovely to be here tonight with all of my other colleagues here, as well as um, those of you who are joining us this evening as well. Um, Pastor Jin Her, would you introduce yourself to us, please? Yes, uh, I'm Jin Her, um, Associate Pastor at Fairmont Avenue United Methodist Church and um, pastor of youth and young adult ministries is there. Wonderful. And I'm glad to be here with you to pray together as uh, so we're watching what's uh, going to next our uh, hope and visions as our pastors and Christians and citizens. So happy to be here. Thanks. And, uh, Mariah Tolgard. Hi, I'm Mariah Tolgard. I use she, her pronouns. I am the pastor at Hamlin Church United Methodist here in St. Paul. And thank you all for being here with us tonight. And I'm honored to be in conversation with these dear colleagues and with all of you. And the Reverend Dr. Ronald Bell Jr. We're going to use all his titles. <laughs> the whole if, I knew, <laughs> if, I, if I knew your middle name, I would have used it too. But I... <laughs> I'll um, I'll reach out to your wife later so I can find out. No, no. Um, <laughs> I'm Ron Bell. I am the senior pastor at Camp Memorial United Methodist Church um, in the Rondo community. Uh, I'm just excited to be a part of this conversation. I'm, I'm looking forward to the, uh, the to the dialogue as we think about today's events and what that means for us going forward. So excited to be. All right, and certainly. Last but certainly not least, we have the Reverend Shauna Horn. Hi, uh, I am Shauna Horn. I'm the pastor at Fairmount Avenue United Methodist Church. I serve with Jin Her um, in the Matt Groveland neighborhood of St. Paul, and and I'm also grateful to be in community with each of you, um, holding our city and our connected neighborhoods and um, and our churches together in, in prayer as we think about how we process the events of this day and also epiphany. Yeah, yeah, today is a, is a holy day in our church calendar and um, it, 
it to sit with that tension of um of the the day the feast of epiphany and and kind of the traumatic events in washington dc um is a lot it's really it's really a lot um well that's who we are um if you are watching this online if you want to leave your just say that you're here so we know that we can be community together um, online. You can just say this is so and so checking in from such and such church and and then we know who's here with us tonight. So um, feel free to do that. Feel free to not do that if you'd rather um, keep your privacy. It, it's up to you. If it's available to you, if it feels good to you, check in and let us know that you're here. Um, with that, I think sometimes it's really helpful to um, help us move into the presence of God um, in some some real, sometimes it just takes a real shift. And so um, we've invited um, Pastor Amanda to lead us in a centering prayer. And so um, I'll invite Amanda to do that for us. Thank you, Katie. And um, those of you who are joining us this evening and my colleagues, if you want to find yourself in in a position where you your feet can touch the ground, where you are anchored to earth, and you are comfortable enough yet discomforted enough to stay present to the next two minutes. Um, because when I think of prayer in general, um, obviously uh, we, we turn to the pros and the pros uh, reside in the Book of Psalms. So I begin with this reading um, parts of Psalm 80 um, of a translation done by Nan Merrill. So it may not quite sound like something that's familiar to you, but I invite you as we go into this time of groundedness to notice your feet first, to close your eyes if you can, to take a deep breath and exhale and excuse me while I turn off my phone before <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> this is a lesson in all the interruptions that life brings us. So returning to your feet, returning to your breath. Hear these words of Psalm 80. Eternal listener. Give heed to your people, you who are our guide and our light, you who dwell amidst the angels, shine forth into the hearts of all nations. Enliven your people with compassion that peace and justice might flourish. Restore us, O Holy One, and let your face shine upon us teach us to love because in your steadfast love you weep with our tears tears that rise from fear and illusion and anger you uphold us when we feel the sting of pride and when our anxiety threatens to paralyze us restore us O holy one let your face shine upon us and teach us to love. As you remain in this time of quiet connection, I'm going to now invite you to welcome what is within you. What is within you tonight? Is it anger? Is it lament? Is it paralysis? Is it hope? Is it confusion? What holds your being right now? I want you to bring that to your attention and into your body. And you are now invited to welcome that experience, whatever that what 
itness is. Welcome it as an opportunity to consent to the divine indwelling within you. How is it that we can consent to the divine indwelling in anger, in lament, such unpleasant emotions to feel? But that is why we breathe. And that is why we remember that the indwelling God is as big as all those emotions combined and therefore has space for it all. Because what is, is sanctified by the Holy One who holds it. So breathe. Breathe and invite what is inside you to become your teacher for the next 15 minutes. 15 minutes of a time of asking God, where are you? Take one more deep breath. Give one more nod of welcome to where you are right now, to what is inside of you. And as you do so on your exhale, invite the teacher of the Holy Spirit to guide you to a place of wisdom with what is. The indwelling Christ has something to teach us right now with what is inside of you. Restore us, O Holy One. Let your face shine upon us and teach us to love. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Amanda. I am more aware of my feet and I um, also feel a little more grounded than I have since about one o'clock this afternoon. So thank you very much. Um, you know, as, as Christians um, in, in particular, uh, as Methodists, um, we we place a high value on, on the Holy Scriptures. And, and like we said earlier, today is the Feast of the... That's not true. I mean, we do. Sorry, I jumped ahead in the program. We do place a high value on Scripture, but that's not where we're going in the program. Uh, heretic police don't come after me. Um, what I do want to do instead, we'll go to Scripture in a little bit, but what I do want to do first is, um, as we were having a conversation earlier this afternoon, uh, Pastor Ron... Um, shared just kind of the the sense of of how trauma has shaped his ministry and and his work as a pastor and and the traumas that came up today um and so i i want to invite him to share a little bit about the triggers and the re-triggers um and the traumas um and what might be happening in us in our different communities today so pastor ron Sure, 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 sure. Thank you. So yeah, I, you know, like everybody else, I'm watching. I'm watching the events uh, today unfold, and I can feel it, right? And it's re-triggering because I'm thinking about all the other protests um, that have happened and the reason why those protests have happened. I'm thinking about George Floyd. I'm thinking. I'm thinking intimately about Jacob Blake um, and just the family. I'm thinking about all the other things, and so. There's this, there's this anxiety on top of anxiety, right? 
I don't only and, and and they call that vicarious trauma, right? Not only my mm. this current trauma, uh, but it's connected to all of these other events and past pieces and stuff. And so, one of the things we have to do, um, and I love how Pastor Amanda put it, is we, uh, we have to recenter ourselves when we experience trauma. There, what happens is there's a disconnect, right? Our brains say, "I'm done. I'm out." <laughs> Our brain says, says this is too much, right? I am I am out of here. So there's a disconnect between our mind, our spirits, and our bodies. And so one of the things that we have to do in moments like this, and I, and I know this is hard, but one of the things that we have to do, number one, is turn the TV off, right? We have to stop the trigger, right? That's the thing you have control over is to stop the trigger. We got to turn the TV off. And then we got to find ways to put ourselves back in charge and control over ourselves. What are the practices that bring me peace? Who are the people that bring me peace? What are the conversations? What are the, what are the, what are the, the, the foods that bring me peace? How do I put my brain back into a place of healing and, 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 and being restored versus being stuck in this trauma? And so I think for each of us, you know, as I'm watching this stuff today, you know, I, I had to break away. I just had to. I couldn't keep going through this, um, and so I think I think that's kind of a, kind of a, of a beginning point, a starting place for us. But we, we we've got to we've got to begin to do the work to to go through healing. Yeah. That's really helpful. That's really really helpful. I I think um, that heart, mind, and and body connection. Um, and, and the things that we can do, the things that we ha have control over and the things that we don't. Um, it's really important to pay attention to. Thank you, I appreciate that a lot. Um, now, I would like to invite um, uh, Mariah, uh, Pastor Mariah to read um, some scripture for us. It's our epiphany story today. So um, yeah, Mariah, thank you. Our epiphany story from Matthew 2 reminds us that this political times that we find ourselves in today are not unique to uh, for this generation right now and that we in fact have descended in our faith from a line uh, of trauma as Pastor Ron said of of political tensions and heated times, and yet still among us, in the midst of it all, there was the face of God in the Christ child. So hear these words today, hear the story anew in the context of these times, and I invite you as you listen uh, to share in the chat section anything that stands out to you from the scripture passage or that connects uh, to you from uh, the news of the day. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophets. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, 
and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And, and having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. We have a second scripture reading as, as we were kind of thinking about what we wanted to do tonight. Um, the idea of love and Jesus's last command to us um, kept coming up that we love each other as, as Jesus had loved us. So I'm going to invite Pastor Jim to read um, from John's Gospel. It's John um, chapter 15, verse 9 to 17. As the Father loved me, I too have loved you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love. Just as I kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love, I have said these things to you so that my joy will be in you, and your joy will be complete. This is my commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. No one has greater love than to give up one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do, my, if you do what I command you. I don't call you servants any longer because the servants don't know what their master is doing. Instead, I call you friends, because everything I heard from my father, I have made known to you. You didn't choose me, but I choose you and appointed, appointed you so that you could go and produce fruit and so that your fruit could last. As a result, whatever you ask the father in my name, he will give you. I give you these commandments so that you can love each other. Amen. Amen. Right, Shana, I'm going to hand the mic over to you. And uh, go ahead. Um, and I just want to offer in full disclosure, I may I'm um, on a, uh, a spiritual retreat, I'm, I'm praying um, and planning and meditating up in Duluth. Um, and of course, as time you would have it, I think that my, my dinner might come to my hotel room in the middle of this. And so if that happens, um, <laughs> I'll, I'll exit and let you continue the conversation. So I apologize for, um, for that, um, but trying to be as safe as possible while I'm, I'm, I'm up here. Um, and so as we continue our conversation, as we consider where we are at in this place of holding epiphany, um, and, re and remembering that, that the Christmas story was never an easy story, an innocent story. Um, we've made it this delightful, wondrous Christmas pageant children's story, but that was not the events of Christmas and certainly not the events of Epiphany. Um, you know, when those, those three travelers came to the cradle of Jesus, they didn't come with with joy, they had joy when they encountered the Christ child, but they also carried a heaviness and a weight because they knew the intentions and motives of Herod. And we know that the result of the Christ child being born was the slaughter of the innocents, mm -hmm. where Herod ordered the execution of every child under the age of two. And sometimes we pass over this part of the story just because it's convenient and it's hard to talk about and today, as we sit in Epiphany, uh, I invite you to sit with the full Epiphany story and the full coming of Christ in this world. As clergy, we struggled with um, how to be both pastoral and prophetic <laughs> as we got together and talked about what do we need to do? What is God calling us to do? How is God calling us to respond? We decided that perhaps just sharing our process was the most pastoral and most prophetic thing we could do right now. And so I'm going to open up the conversation and just ask, how are each of you, if you would like to share, processing the events of today? How are you holding it with Epiphany? Where are you finding struggle and challenge? Um, 
both as a, an individual person, but also as a clergy person. Um, what, are you, what are you feeling and thinking? So uh, that's the question I, I ask. And I invite you who are listening at home to think about that question too. How are you responding to? What is your reaction to? Where's the challenge for you in the events of today? Um, and then also to hold them with love, right? To hold those challenges with love, which is the ultimate call of Christ and incarnation. So uh, with that, I invite you to share in the chat or clergy, if you would like to share um, your reactions. And, and I might ask Pastor Jin, because I know he has to zip over to lead youth group um, in just a few minutes. So I don't know if Jin, if you would like to share a little bit about how you're feeling. Yes, um, just in five minutes, I need to leave for the youth. Uh, group Wednesday program. So um, the epiphany is is not event one day or one season, but it's it's our lives. Um, we we witness to the how the Jesus came to us and live with us as a living and loving with other each other. So that's the point um, this season and last Sunday and this week. Or we reminded, uh, we're thankful, we're grateful to God incarnate with us, being with us. But today we're watching, we're watching um, so florid situation and violence, and I, I couldn't understand what what happened in in this country because my perspective is always as immigrant view in means as a, as a Korean American, as Asian American, moved to America with great expectation. This is a good country. This is good opportunity, more, more, more good chance to live here and, and raise, raise my kids here. It's more, uh, you know, uh, expectation about this country and this society community. But, in reality, always in struggles, racial and political and division and, and cultural discrimination. Um, so that's why I'm asking always to myself, how can I love with neighbors? Love, love each other is easy to who um, to treat me as, as a good friend, as a good neighbor, it's a good relationship. It is to love them, each other, but totally different views, different parts, different side of people. How can I love as a as a Christian, as a love, a disciple of Christ? Uh, for now, I don't understand what's happening, and 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 I couldn't understand what they are doing, but some point uh, how can we far away uh, even not only the political issues but a lot of issues how can we far away different and divided already so keep praying for the grace and the light true light shine upon us and that's why i'm still struggling and but also witnessing and catching the next generation that we are here. That's why we are here to love others with with living together. Even we are so different, um, different culture, different ratio, different language, different skin color, but we are children of God. We reminded that and pray for that. Thank you. I need to leave. Jen, it's so good to see you. Thank you, Jen. Uh, and I'm just going to invite if someone feels led to respond or to share where they are at. Um, next. I think one of the things that it brought up for me watching today was um, I had happened to turn on the TV just before the folks started going up the steps. Um, and watching, um, watching the 
just the lack of what, what felt to me like a, a, a real lack of response from the Capitol Police or from um, the military or, or from anyone really in, in, in um, you know, the, like I, I said out loud, like, where are the rubber bullets? Where are the, where is the concussion grenade? Where is the tear gas? And, and I was contrasting that with this summer. Um, there's a group of us clergy praying in the um, parking lot of the Target on University in Hamlin. And there were National Guard tanks and there were military helicopters circling like right above our heads to the point that we couldn't even hear the clergy that were praying with a microphone um, and and just feeling this this disconnect between a group of pastors in robes in a target parking lot being threatening enough that we needed military police or not military police but we need military presence um, and yet when we have like the entirety of one branch of our government in a building And, 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 and nothing happens, you know, when, when protesters, so just kind of feeling like a grief and a, and a disconnect and a, a sense of injustice that, that certain gatherings are, certain gatherings are okay and others aren't, and not really understanding the, the moral scares, the moral scale um, of what was happening. Yeah, I think I think that language of disconnect um, is it right? It's like you, you just can't believe like what we're witnessing uh, yeah. today. And I struggle with uh, Pastor Jen's piece about loving our neighbor because to his point, how do you love those folk? How do you, you know, that doesn't that doesn't resemble a neighbor, right? Mm. A, neighbor, a neighbor by definition means equal, the person beside me. Right, that doesn't resemble neighbor. So how do you, how do you love? And so, the in, and we discussed this earlier, but the challenging part is getting around that portion of the text to the last commandment, which is love folk the way I loved you. Right, mm -hmm. right. If you can't define them as neighbor, if they don't see themselves as next to you, just love them the way I've loved you. Right, the way I've forgiven you, the way I've held you, the way I've giving you grace after grace and mercy after mercy. Just do the best to do that, you know, for them, which is which is a little easier. Um, but it's still a challenge. It's still a challenge because we're 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 in this thing. I'm I'm watching it today. And again, I'm being re-triggered thinking about all the other protests um, that have happened and the black bodies that have you know been murdered um, as a result of those protests. But I'm also thinking as I'm watching it, that we are watching the end of something, right? Mm. We, are, we are watching the last vestiges of, of something. Like there is a system that is ending and this is, this, this is the way it's going out, right? And so that brings me to that Isaiah 58 text where it says that, you know, we, will, we, who, we who remain will be repairers of the breach. Mm. And so if we're, if, if we're going to repair the breach, we're, we're watching the end of this thing. Um, they are, this is it. You can't keep doing this. This is it, right? And so, but if we're going to stay and be repairers of the breach, then what does it look like to remake this system in love, yeah. right? To capture those texts and say, okay, um, let's remake this entire system. In love. So, so I'm challenged with that piece. I'm clear that what we see today um, is the beginning of an end of a system. I'm also clear, especially with these last two elections in Georgia, that we're seeing something new arise, right? And so we, we, are, we, we get to be the repairers of the breach. And so the work of remaking a system in love has got to be where our focus is. Because if we get caught up in this, then we'll get caught up in the rubble. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's fruitless. Yeah. So I'm struggling with, 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 with mm -hmm. that, that, that attention. Yeah. Ron, I'm just going to piggyback off what you just said, because, um, you know, the thing I've been wrestling with for quite some time now, especially when it comes to the whole 
Jesus love mojo, you know, as, as Christians, we're so easy to fly that outside of, you know, every orifice of our mouth (laughs) about love your neighbor, love, 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 love. Well, what is love and what does it mean to love? And, you know, earlier I used that, that phrase, you know, love refines, it doesn't recuse Mm. and, and love, which means love hurts because love, love keeps individuals in community and having to um, understand that we are all part of a community of God, right? In in our language, we would call it, you know, we are part of the community of the children of God. And and a part of me is like, and I won't use um, (laughs) specific politicians names here, but I'm going to use the the, the epiphany story. (sighs) Watching the anger and the, and, and anger that actually went full into hatred, deep, deep seated hatred, that anger that had gone defunct. Um, and, and recognizing that anger is a mechanism of teaching us that something's not right, right? So, okay, it's okay to be angry, but what happens when we go hateful? And can I love people who are hating in, in that physical manner that I saw today? Which then brings me further to the question that I've wrestled with for a while, can I see the Herod in myself? Because, and that's why I'm using the word Herod here, (laughs) but in, you know, the contemplative tradition, this is kind of a big one. Um, It's a big one of being able to say these moments, these pinnacle moments in history where there's trauma, where there's, where we see, like, like you're saying, the dismantling of a system and the rising up of a new one. It's the opportune time for us to start asking some pretty darn holy questions like is that who are we and who are we to become and who are we to be and it's like well can i see the herod in myself can i see i am a human being i have the capacity to love i have the capacity to hate i have the capacity to lament i have the capacity to to affirm right and and the gamut of being human and therefore following Christ is Christ looks at us and says, are you going to choose love? Are you going to see Amanda Ray Luneman that you too are Herod? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And are you going to choose to behave that way? Or are you going to choose to follow me? And I tell you what, a day like today, I wanted to be Herod number two, just responding to Herod number one. No joke. <laughs> but I think I think I think Amanda, you and I don't want to, not, but but I think I think you raise a great point because it's it's about seeing love as whole and complete, not easily divisible between love or hate, right? I think that's the problem. I think that's the system we're seeing die is this binary construct of either um, Democrat, Republican. I'm either for this thing or against that thing. I'm either X or I'm like, like that just doesn't work. Yeah. It just doesn't work. It, it doesn't. I want to, I want to offer just in the interest of time, um, if Mariah has something that she would like to share or respond to, um, to make sure that we, we all get a chance to yeah, share our process and, a little bit too. And, so grateful for uh, my wise colleagues here and you know I, um, I I hope and pray that we are watching something die that we are coming to the end of this this uh, uh, paradox this dichotomy that um, has been so divisive for so long and I you know in thinking about that that Herod and me and those those pieces and, and you know I think I have been in in a place of anger really today to see this happening and and part of me sitting with this like how can this be happening and yet at the same time how did how did we not see it coming and yeah. and hearing you know other friends and uh, saying of course this is is what we should have expected after this sort of hateful uh, rhetoric for so long um, and and then and wondering well what is my role you know in um, being that proponent of love of responding in love of helping to teach our children a different way of how am I going to explain this to my three daughters 
uh, today of what will it be like for them to grow up now knowing that they've lived in a country where there was a coup on the government in our lifetime, you know, that, that, I mean, how does that shape history and what we say about ourselves? And, and, and so we have to look for that star and, and that epiphany star and pray that it will to transform us and send us another way. And I, I, I think, you know, Pastor Ron, you're right that, that what we saw, you know, in, in Georgia of a whole new generation coming up and saying, this is how this country is going to be. And, and hopefully, you know, um, uh, as people of faith coming together uh, across our uh, different spectrums and, and saying, no, this is what the kingdom of God will look like. And we're bigger than what, what limits us. And um, that, that love that connects us, the teachings of Jesus that are inherently anti-racist, that are inherently about bringing people together in the interest of, of everyone's best interests being elevated and everyone having abundant life, that that is what calls us forward. Well, I just um, wanna close our time today and, and think about uh, more deeply this idea of love and what it means to be repairers of the breach. And when I think about that and I think about ushering in the kingdom of God, that we wouldn't stop with the institution of our government, right? but that we would hold up the mirror to mm -hmm. our churches and our faith communities, um, our schools, our family systems, our neighborhoods, because we didn't get here just through politics and government. We got here through our dinner tables and our Sunday school classes mm -hmm. um, and our, our neighborhood cookouts. And so maybe be repairs of the breach in all of those places. Uh, I'm reminded by today, part of my spiritual retreat, I've been listening to Bishop Michael Curry's um, book, um, is it The Way of Love, I think it's called, or The Way is Love. Um, but he claims, and, and I, I, I've believed this for a long time, that the opposite of love is not hate, yeah. but selfishness. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. When we promote loving ourselves over loving our neighbor, mm -hmm. We fail to enact the will of God in this world. And so with that, uh, I want to offer, there are some things we can do. One is we encourage you at home to pray. Uh, be a people of prayer. And prayer is not just about asking God to bend the world according to our will. It's actually about us aligning ourselves with God's will, right? <laughs> it's asking for God's revelation to be made known to us that we might be in conversation with God and, and be um, experience the revelation and vision that God has for this world. So please be a people of prayer. We encourage you to reach out to any one of us, to your pastor, uh, in your place of faith, um, as you process, if you need someone to process with. Uh, tomorrow morning, actually, it's, it's convenient timing to a certain degree that this is a resource for us, but Dr. Reverend Dr. Ron Bell is hosting a workshop uh, on trauma um, through the Minnesota Annual Conference, and it's, it's the REACH webinar series. We'll put a link in the chat. You can register through the conference website, um, but he'll be specifically talking about trauma and, and hope, um, and how do we as a church engage trauma and hope. And I look forward to seeing you all there because I'm going to be participating. So. <laughs> so so, know that that's available tomorrow morning. That is a resource uh, provided by our local conference um, for us to participate in. With that, I invite you to receive this benediction uh, from John chapter 15, the scripture that Jin read, uh, verses 16 and 17. And I invite you to hear this as God is speaking this to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, says God. And God appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask for in the name of Christ. Jesus says that he is giving us these commands so that you might love one another. May it be so. 
go in peace. Thank you, everyone. Amen.